Hi, welcome back to Calls with Your Kinky Bestie. I'm Emma. I'm a kinky human, and I've been gone for a little while. Um, but I want to share why. <laughs> Gonna get a little personal. You're gonna learn a little bit more about me. Um, also, super transparently, this is not a very kinky episode. Um, I'm actually gonna be telling a story about like a job hunt and. The theme of the episode, I mean, we're talking all about rejection today. That's what's going on. Um, It's pretty emotional. But I've been in a relationship for quite a while now. Um, Coming up on, oh my gosh, close to a year. So being rejected while dating is something that, of course, I've experienced a lot in the past, but hasn't been super recent. But recently getting rejected for this job that I really thought was it, um... It just kind of brought me back to all of that and I wanted to be able to like share my personal outcomes and lessons and all that kind of shit while also just like looping you in on what's going on. So anyways, sorry I've been gone for two months. Um, A broader context is that I have been manifesting a change up in my job and my financial situation for a while now. Um, And that's actually part of how Kinky Bestie came about. So I decided to kind of like, you know, get a little entrepreneurial with it, try to take things into my own hands. Like maybe that's the solution. That's what was kind of like coming to me and what threads are taking me to. Um, But about two months ago, this job just came into my awareness and something about it. I don't know. I just really had to follow it. (laughs) Um, I really felt like it was coming into my awareness for a reason. And I know now that yes, it was for a very intentional reason. But basically, I have worked in a retail setting for this company that I really like for a while now, like years, like I first started working there about five years ago, which is crazy to think. But there it is. Um, but yeah, I've been working at this company retail. Um, I also outside of that have a degree in interior design. I also got that degree while I was working this job retail. And I kind of always pictured in my head that, Ooh, maybe I could, you know, do interior design for this company someday. That would be so cool. I'd love to do that and kind of like bridge my, value passions with my skill set and like my career aspirations and stuff like that. So it was always in my head that this would be a thing I wanted to do in the future. Um, But the company I work for, their design team actually works out of a different country. So that was a big obstacle. So when I imagine working for them, it also involved like moving to Canada. (laughs) which is crazy to think about because I'm pretty comfortable in the USA right now. And I've got my home base here and my people here and just all of the things. Um, And in addition to that, it also involved getting some experience like outside of this retail company to be able to like work on for them a little bit. And Well, I did do that for a while, for about a year and a half, I was no longer working retail for this company and like kind of did like this internship that was sometimes part-time, but sometimes full-time for um, my college. And I learned a lot. It was super valuable, but you know, a lot of my ethical um, interests weren't really being met. Um, So I didn't find, you know, long-term fulfillment in that job. So I ended up going back to retail for this company after I graduated, which was a little bit of like an ego hit that all my friends were going off and getting, you know, these really cool salary jobs with these amazing design firms. Some of them were like moving to big cities to do it. And I was like going back to my job that I had when I was 17. (laughs) But I don't know. I love it there. Um, There's something about it. But working retail was starting to take a, is like, I mean, it is t- currently taking a toll on my body and my energy. And I just know that 
it's not like a long-term fit for me. Um, but whatever. Okay. So it always seemed like this job would be a little bit impossible or like a little bit, you know, more out there than I thought it would be because it involved like moving to another country or whatever. But two months ago, my company posts this job internally and you were able to apply from the USA, like from my country, I could apply to this job that and do it remotely, which is never possible before. So the job that I had been manifesting was to be able to work from home to earn more money than I am now. Cause while I'm comfortable with where I am, I know that my, uh, expenses will be increasing eventually. Um, and also, you know, I wanted to be able to kind of work in a way that involved more like intentional planning and responding. Whereas like working in retail, it's a lot of very immediate reaction to circumstances around you, um, it, which is pretty stressful. So I'd like to be able to step, you know, into more of like a planning role where I can really take my time with decisions and also just like utilizing more of my skill set. Um, as you know, I did go to college and, you know, get a degree in all these really cool like technologies and stuff. And I wanted to be able to use that and also just grow in new ways in a speed that would be comfortable and not crazy stressful, but, you know, have supportive people around me and all of those things. So when this job suddenly appears and it's a work from home opportunity that would, you know, be paying more money than I am earning now, um, would be using that skill set, would be doing all of these things. I thought, oh my God, holy shit, this is it. I've got to go full in. So I, you know, applied. Um, I got, you know, first interview, passed my first interview. They, they asked me to do a project for them, like a take-home assignment. And then after doing that, which was crazy. Oh my God, I spent so many hours. I think there usually isn't part of their interview process. So they didn't, I think they over asked, but whatever. Um, and I did get a final interview for this job. And I thought, oh my God, for sure it's going to be me. Because I did learn like I was the only internal candidate that had made it to that stage. You know, I was a finalist who made it through that that project process and, and a final interview. Um, and when it came time for a decision to come to me, and by the way, this is all happening over the course of two freaking months. So over these two months where I'm applying for this job, uh, it was very stressful not knowing whether or not this was going to be part of my future and whether or not I should be like wrapping up loose ends with retail, and, like, you know, training someone to take over for me and all of that stuff. And of course it's retail. So things are moving fast and there's like a lot of changes happening within my store as well and all of that stuff. Um, so I made it through the f final interview. I had my entire team rooting for me. Um, like my leaders, <laughs> my leader, my like boss and my boss's boss were rooting for me so hard. Like people were even, you know, like doing interview practice with me, like late at night, uh, getting me as ready as I possibly could be. Um, so when it came time for me to get my decision, I thought for sure it's going to be me. How could it not be me? This is like the perfect job for me. It showed up. I made it to the final round. I really am, you know, presenting what they they wanted to see. Um, and the email I got wasn't like a, a yes, no email. It was like a, Hey, I've got an update in your application. Can we schedule a phone call so we can talk about it? So my thought is like, okay, people don't, re don't schedule a call with you to reject you. A rejection is an email. Um, so I thought for sure this call would be them accepting me for this position, but maybe like wanting to take some time to finalize salary and gauge like my expectations of ban benefits and stuff before actually sending an offer through. Um, and I get on this call, I'm talking to this recruiter for the first time that I've been in email contact with consistently for two months now. Um, and I'm told, Hey, I'm so sorry, but actually we're not moving forward with you for this role. We have decided there's a better fit with someone else, an external hire, I'm assuming. Um, but the feedback I have for you is that you did tick all these boxes for us, but you're not able to tick this one, which was, you know, that piece about getting experience outside of the, the brand. Um, 
like interior design experience. So my voice wavered, started to feel some tears building in my eyes and my nose like stinging, <laughs> which is my like, oh, I need to cry reaction. Um, and it was so hard to keep myself together because I really did not think that this was going to happen. <laughs> um, but as she's telling me that, you know, it's a, you don't have this, that's one experience that we are looking for. My immediate response and some, something I said to her is, wow, that's so frustrating that in order to work for this company, I would need to leave the company. <laughs> um, and then I'm told, yes, I, you know, we understand the irony there. This is not a super traditional path of growth for people like moving from retail into this type of role. So we want to figure out a way to develop you into it. And she asks, how would I feel about doing some sort of part-time work for them where I could, you know, partner with my shop now, work a few days a week in my shop, my retail setting that I'm so familiar with and know so well. And also I run a lot of the operations pieces there now. Um, and then spent a few days a week um, working for them remotely and kind of getting into this role at like a junior level, um, getting some mentorship from senior designers, taking on small projects, being in all the meetings and doing all the things. And I had the sinking feeling of, oh my God, yes, that's actually the job I want. Like, why couldn't we have been talking about this the whole time? That sounds perfect. Um, that sounds like it would be more of a comfortable growth pace. I wouldn't have to immediately jump from fully in retail to fully online, which is, you know, a big, um, big transition to make. <laughs> like my, my job is basically my, my whole life now, you know, um, and when we ended that phone call, although I was offered this really amazing opportunity, um, I just started sobbing. Because although like my long-term manifestation was like a, a comfortable growth job that, you know, would increase my income, allow me like work from home flexibility and like more of like a planning role. Um, like, even though that was just offered to me, I was also rejected for this job that was all I thought about for two months and like all I worked towards. Um, and bringing this all back to dating, I mean, this happens to this has happened to me and like many of the, my friends who are also going through dating where although you're like wanting these, you know, sp like specific like traits and treatment from a partner, once you actually start dating someone, like, you know, going on dates, which is kind of like, like interviewing for a role and like, you know, like doing like trial projects or whatever, which could be, you know, like spending longer periods of time together and starting to like support each other's lives a little bit more um, and more involvement and all of those things, which kind of feel like a, like a trial run for like commitment or dating. Um, it's so easy when you're with a certain person to think, ooh, okay, because I'm asking for all these certain things and this person is per like coming into my reality and giving me a lot, if not maybe all of those things I'm wanting it suddenly becomes, well, this is the specific thing that I want because it's what is right in front of me and what I'm, you know, wanting to work towards. So being rejected for that um, or just having it not work out for, you know, it could be mutual reasons, could be, you know, like you needing to reject them, whatever it is, it can feel so devastating. Um, and at the time of me receiving this phone call, this is like, this was two months worth of everyone in my circle, like my entire store, you know, my partner, my parents, my other friends, 
all really wanting this job for me and so involved um, and, you know, wanting updates every step of the way. And, you know, they had also felt like the job had dragged out, like the interview process had dragged out for so long. Like everyone was so eager to know what was happening. So I had all these like texts and calls that I had to make once I knew what was going on. Um, but I just couldn't until I took a like a good solid, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes to just sob and get my feelings out and release the vision I had in my mind of picking up the phone and hearing, we want you, we love you. Let's like, let's move forward with getting you in this job. How much money can we give you to do this? You know, um, it was a big emotional drop. So even though, you know, I ultimately the outcome of that phone call was very positive and much more aligned with my my vision of my career growth and job growth and just like all of those things and just would be a better fit with my my life um yeah it was just a lot to grieve this idea that I had created that like maybe this would be this would be the thing now um so I guess this all comes back to really trusting that if there's something you want <laughs> especially if it's like this overlying theme, you got to trust the things that are coming to you that might not seem exactly right to also be part of the way that you get there. <laughs> okay, I don't know if that makes sense. But like me having this opportunity of like basically this job is creating a specific job. They have never done this before. They don't know how, like the recruiter literally has to learn how to make this happen. Um, and, you know, get, you know, collaboration from like my retail managers and, and you know, I'm sure they have to do births out with their budget and all those sorts, sorts of things. But when I applied two months ago for this, this, this job, what they offered me instead did not exist yet. It was made because of me applying for that job. So there wasn't a way two months ago where this, you know, this junior design role part-time would have come, like it just wasn't going to happen. So though that would have been the more aligned thing for me to go for, it wasn't an option. So I had to trust and follow like what was presenting itself to me at that time. Um, and while I did, you know, I <laughs> did learn a lot and, you know, I'm sure I'll continue to learn a lot about, you know, attachment to like specific outcomes and ideas. Like we always are, right? Um, this is just a new lesson in trusting that, you know, if it's coming to you, it's coming to you for a reason. Even if it doesn't seem exactly right, it doesn't matter if it's not exactly right because you, you trust that everything will work itself out. And also you innately know your boundaries. Like once you set those boundaries, you know what they are. Um, and maybe the reason something is coming to you that isn't for you is so that you can well, practice exercising that boundary and saying no. Um, and that's part of rejection too. Sometimes if someone is rejecting you, it's because you, like, they had to say no because you wouldn't. <laughs> like, it was never going to be a fit, but you weren't willing to say no. You were willing to, you know, work it out for that, even if it wasn't right. Um, so, yeah, that person had to say no because it, like, ultimately wasn't meant to be for you. So, I think the same thing is true of dating. <laughs> Um, you know, if you've got this vision of, ooh, I want this partner who's going to be super supportive and nearby and like maybe has this one love language that I'm really receptive to and like maybe, you know, I really want to be with someone who communicates through like acts of service or whatever and supports my life in that way. Um, maybe you've got someone coming into your reality that isn't there yet. Or maybe you're not ready to accept that yet. So what if you trusted that if someone's coming, like if you're feeling drawn to someone for some reason, it's to teach you something. It's to ultimately get you there. Um, and the sooner that you learn, you know, how to practice your boundaries and your no, then the less rejection that you will also face as a, as a human. And... 
this has gotten a little out there, a little woo-woo for me right now. But, like, going back to, like, this job didn't exist. It only was created because I went for this thing that came into my reality. And then from there, something else was able to grow from that. And I've experienced that with my current partner as well. Um, When we first met, like, a lot of the, like, initial communication um and you know like even like our our sex like wasn't what I was wanting out of it or necessarily what they were wanting out of it but we had to meet to figure that out and then be able to communicate what could be done instead so maybe it could have been a conversation sooner in this interview process where I could have shared oh hey I'm interested in working on your design team but I'm feeling reluctant to leave my retail life just yet. There are some things I know I want to learn before I'm immediately slung into like being held accountable for them. And I will say there are other pieces of the job, like this may, maybe this is too technical or whatever, but like I was worried like that some of the, the pro- programs that they're using um, would kind of be holding me back because I've learned like different programs in school that have higher capability. Um, So maybe this is a lesson I still need to figure out with them. I don't know. But maybe if those things had been a conversation sooner on in the interview process, like maybe the final outcome wouldn't have been like a, ooh, sorry, we're not accepting you for this design role. We're going to try to make you something else. Maybe it would have like the conversation would have been, ooh, okay, then let's, let's start looking at this other thing for you. Because we like everything you're bringing to the table. We like your knowledge of the brand and you're so committed to it. And you, you know, have this education piece and all that stuff, but like, let's look at a development role. Um, like maybe the uh, straight, you know, no rejection wouldn't have had to happen if I could have, you know, communicated sooner on like my hesitations of what I was needing. Um, and of course, it's going to be a little different in, in an interview process than like communicating with a potential partner. Um, you know, in an interview process, you really only have, you know, 30, 45 minute segments where you're talking to one person and they've got their agenda, their things that they need to ask you and vice versa. Cause there's, you know, you really only have so much time to learn about each other. Um, but basically, you know, the outcome of my applying for that role was a, uh, hey, we, we're not ready to marry you yet, but what if we did it for a while? What if we figured out a way to have an open relationship while you were also doing this other thing? Um, like maybe that could work. I would have never envisioned that being my ideal job. Like, it, you know, it wasn't really, you can't wrap your mind around that happening. Um, like how, how was I to know that it would be possible that I could work a couple days a week in my shop and then a few days a week hop online to help out the design team for the same company um, and learn from them and be developed into the role that I eventually want to be? Like, no freaking way. Um, <laughs> we you, There's this phrase in the manifestation community that like, you know, it's either this or it's something better. And when I was closing in on finishing out that interview process, it was so hard to imagine that being rejected for the job could be the something better. And like, I would say it, (laughs) but you know, it's either this or something better. And if I'm getting rejected, it's because something else is happening. And I don't know exactly what that is, but you know, I trust that it would be for my highest good and actually aligning closer to this goal that I have for myself. But, damn, a no still is going to (laughs) hurt. But, you know, when I got the no, I still had to have my period of grief and releasing that and accepting that maybe this thing isn't for me ever. Or maybe this thing just isn't for me right now, but eventually I will get this role. Um, Or maybe this role is meant for me, but at a different company. Or maybe this role is meant for me at this same company, but at a different time when when they've learned more things or you know their team is a better fit for for me as a human like you never know but it it all gets figured out (laughs) and the same is true for dating um like maybe it's that your your ideal person 
is they, like they don't exist yet as in like you know maybe they're in another relationship right now or like maybe the version of themselves that they are right now isn't the version that's meant for you like maybe you're supposed to be with the version of them that's you know two years from now um or maybe you know so the, the person is the whole thing but maybe also like the relationship configuration isn't what you're imagining is actually what would be the best fit for you like maybe you're swearing up and down that you want something monogamous but actually your relationship goals are you know flexibility and um (laughs) god I don't know like maybe like a lot of sexual exploration that just isn't realistic for one person to want to try all those things with you so maybe actually your your ideal relationship would be you know with multiple people involved or maybe your ideal relationship isn't a committed relationship at all maybe it's floating from human to human that is ready to give you what you want so Go back, resettle, figure out what your boundaries are and what is your ultimate goal. And then when you're meeting people that you think could be hitting those yeses or hitting those no's for you, you can be aware of that in the background, but maybe also just trust that, you know, the person coming to you is either a lesson or a blessing. And you don't know which that is, but you're curious to find out. And (laughs) you don't know, you don't try. I don't know. Oh, Lord, this has gotten weird. But I hope that I was able to communicate something of value to someone and that even a little part of this made sense or is relevant to your life. Or maybe it's not relevant to your life right now, but it'll be relevant to your life two months from now. Oh, fuck. (laughs) Who knows? Anyways, I'm back. I'm trying to be back, but damn, for this these past two months where I really thought this job was going to be the thing, I just had to give into that. I had to act like that was going to be my job by not taking time away from like that job interviewing process to then like do this other like side hustle thing because at the time I felt like, ooh, maybe this side hustle thing isn't as aligned, like having this podcast and stuff. And I'm not sure if the current version of Kinky Bestie that I've planned or have created is exactly right either, but I do trust that it's come come to me for a reason and I'm going to figure it out. So thanks for being a part of this. I so appreciate you. Um, as always, you can find me on Instagram. I am at Kinky Bestie and I will see you in the next one. Bye.